Hi, this is Chris Jenkins along with Fozzie Whitaker here today. Um, we like to always interact with our fans and we'd ask you guys about who, what was the breakout player from the preseason. And you said this gentleman to my left, Fozzie, so we were able to get him on the show. Fozzie, thank you for coming to the show. Thank you. So, I appreciate you having me here. We want to get, get the city and the people more familiar with you as a person as well as the football player. So uh, first, college and hometown. All right. What kind of hometown uh, are you from? Uh, my hometown, I was born in Houston, Texas. Uh, grew up in Pearland, Texas, which is right south of Houston. Uh, I, I played my, my high school ball there at Pearland High School. Uh, after I played high school ball there, I accepted a scholarship offer from the University of Texas at Austin. Hook'em horn. Uh, yes, sir. Hook'em horn. I got to see it. Hook'em horn. <laughs> Hook'em horn. So, uh, I played there, redshirted my first year, and then played the rest of, of the last four years. And uh, uh, that was my senior season uh, in 2011. Okay. And now you're proudly uh, made the 53-man roster here in yes, Charlotte, sir. the Carolina yes, Panthers. Yes, sir. Now I am a Carolina Panther, and I'm, I'm loving it. Well, tell me this. What is the biggest difference as a runner with you from college days at UT to as a professional now? Uh, well, on a professional level, uh, it's the best of the best, and this is what you always look forward to and work towards. Uh, but you understand that everybody has turned it up a notch. Uh, the speed of the game has really increased. And, uh, man, you see linemen that, that are as fast as wideouts and running backs sometimes chasing you down. And so uh, that was one of the biggest differences that I've noticed and that I've been able to uh, had to adjust to really was uh, getting adjusted to the speed, the speed of the players and the speed of the game. Okay. All right. So now, like I said, I want to get into knowing who Fozzie Whitaker is, the mm -hmm. man behind the mask. Okay. <laughs> so I had to go and do a little digging, a little Googling and everything so mm -hmm. I can find. Usually I'll ask, you know, your teammates, but you ain't been here that long. Right, right. For me to really ask a teammate. <laughs> so I had to go Googling. And Instagram was like a pot of gold. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna bring up a few pictures. And, and when I said a picture, I just want you to tell me the story behind it. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So the first thing, uh, National Dog Day. National I did not even know there was such a thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I feel like each day there's something that's a national something day. Uh -huh. And uh, I can't remember what uh, day. It was a, a week ago uh -huh. or a week and a half ago. And uh, National Dog Day, I saw po uh, people posting pictures of their dogs. And so I had to be a proud that. dog owner myself okay. and post a picture of my dog. He's a nine-month-old husky. Okay. Uh, his name is Nico. Okay. Uh, Where'd the name come from? Uh, that was a name that I've always liked. Uh, no particular reason. Uh, I've always wanted a husky. Okay. And I've always just wanted to name him Nico. Okay. And so I finally, finally got one and uh, was back home with him. And uh, he's a huge handful. And a okay. very energetic pup, but uh, he's my energetic pup that I love. And he's back home in Austin right now, okay. uh, getting well taken care of. But uh, that's my pup. I oh. like him. I love okay. Him. Now, we are in uh, NASCAR country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next picture I saw, I think, were you at Texas Motor Speedway? I saw you with yes, a helmet. Sir. And you were like waving. I'm like, okay. Yes, sir. Where's so this guy at? so uh, there, there was the Houston Grand Prix, is actually what that was. And, uh, I was invited out to do a celebrity go-kart race uh, and that was uh, a mixture of, I want to say it was about 12 uh, people that they had invited in to race uh, that were celebrities and they matched us up with partners that uh, were in different various companies mm -hmm. uh, around the Houston area and all this was uh, to create proceeds to help with the MD Anderson Cancer Center and provide okay. awareness for the Cancer Center okay. uh, in Houston. And uh, really, it was just a fun time giving back, uh, being able to do that. And it was a blessing to do that, and it was just fun. And it was just go kart racing. They had uh, <laughs> had Roger Clemens there. Okay. Uh, one of my fellow Texas Longhorns. Okay. Uh, had had a, a couple of people that actually raced professionally. Uh, there was a guy that raced professionally uh, motorcycles. And how long ago uh, was this? This was. Man, I, I, I don't want to lie to you, but I believe it was at the end of June. Okay. So uh, it wasn't a, you know, no team was going to get mad at you for... Nah, no. <laughs> no was like, it, was, it was still while, while we were doing our, our break period before okay. we came back for OTAs and stuff. So I want to say it was the end of June, uh, I believe. Okay. Now, when you walked in here, I forget what you were doing, but I, I didn't see you look around noticing that we're in a photography studio. <laughs> so uh, underwater photography... 
I oh, saw he's a picture. <laughs> so I don't, you know, is that, is that a part-time hobby or that just uh, you, know, you got bored? I'm, I'm always been uh, somebody that loves the outdoors and being outside. Okay. Uh, so I bought this, uh, it's a Nikon, uh, like waterproof, shockproof camera. You didn't get the GoPro. I didn't, I have a GoPro. Okay. I have one of those as well, but okay. I wanted something a little bit bigger. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the, the, the GoPro works great too. Uh -huh. so I, I like using both of them, but uh, personally I found that this Nikon camera, uh, it, it's waterproof, like I said, waterproof, shockproof. Uh, it has more clarity, okay. uh, more megapixels, uh, so that I can see more and, and it gives me a little bit more in depth. Like it'll tell you the range and depth of, of how far <laughs> you, you are in the water. You need to have I need it. I need it the works. I need it the works, and so uh, it, it gives GPS location. Okay. Uh, like I said, it gives you your depth underwater, how deep you go in feet. Uh, and what were you doing in elevation. that picture? Were you blowing up uh, something? Or? I, I <laughs> no, couldn't quite. No. Uh, you remember what you were uh, doing? Depending on which one it was, I'm trying to remember because I, I took a whole bunch and okay. I can't remember which one I even posted. But you were having fun, Instagram. needless to say. I was having fun. I, I had my family there. We were actually in Arkansas uh, for for a family reunion. Okay. And I had my family there. Uh, I have an eight month year old son. Okay. And I took a lot of my pictures of him, honestly, yeah. him uh, just doing stuff underwater. And then I posted a couple pictures of myself and my girlfriend, and uh, we were just making funny poses and stuff. Right. And, that was the, actually the first time that I saw the camera work underwater. So <laughs> I was hoping that it worked. And right. <laughs> it was, they didn't sell me on something. I spent so much money on it and it didn't work. And I broke the camera. So I had to test it out and it, and it turned out okay. great. So I need to invite you over when we get new gadgets here because we Definitely. got the quadcopter. Definitely. And we, we went through a few and we crashed them, but we won't talk about that. You know, we'll, we'll stay on the path. And it's funny you say that is I bought one of those like mini quadcopters. Yeah, we had the mini and one. And I had the mini one and uh, can't take you know, I, well. I couldn't take that one outdoors. It's not an outdoors one. And speaking of National Dog Day, my puppy actually chewed it up. Okay. And props to Nico. Yeah, props to him. <laughs> props to him. He was telling you you needed to upgrade. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm assuming that when you, you say you like outdoors, mm -hmm. um, fishing goes hand in hand with that? Definitely, definitely, man. Uh, there's a couple of guys back in Austin I went to school with. Uh, I can name three people right now. My, my good friend DJ Monroe, uh -huh. uh, my good friend Kenan Robinson who plays for the, for the Redskins right now. Uh, a couple of other guys, uh, Joey who's been in, in Austin. Uh, I've gone sh fishing a lot of times with Jordan Shipley. Uh, when's the best time to go fish? The best time is depends on what you're fishing for. So, so the first thing is you, you got to figure out what you're fishing for. So in Austin, uh, there are a ton of, of uh, you know, I call them honey holes, uh, depending on what you're fishing for. So if you're fishing for like crappie, uh -huh. uh, it's kind of better to go a little bit later in the, in the night, like in the evening, going towards the nighttime. Okay. And, and a lot of people use lights that they'll put into the water to attract minnows. Is that cheating? It's not cheating. It's not <laughs> cheating. It's not cheating. Uh, but they, they put lights in the water and it attracts the minnows. And uh -huh. so if you attract the bait fish, then a bigger fish will come. And so by attracting the minnows there, it brings the crappie to you. Okay. And so at that point, you put, you put your, your pole in the water. Uh, hook it with the minnow and, and hopefully you have some action and, and a lot of times you will catch bass, crappie, sometimes even catfish by, by doing that. Um, me personally, I love to catch catfish. Uh, the love best catfish. time for catfishing uh -huh. is, is at nighttime as well. During the daytime, the water is really hot in Texas, uh, so they're not really looking to be very active at that time just mm -hmm. because it's so hot. So they're usually in cooler places either deep, deep in the water or they'll be in the shade. But at nighttime, uh, you know, the water cools off a little bit more, so they're more active and, and uh, they're nocturnal, nocturnal predators. So uh -huh. uh, they're, they're always active whenever it comes nighttime. And so uh, they have a lot of big fish in Texas that now, I like to catch. D'Angelo Williams. Mm -hmm. Y'all should be hitting it off kind of, kind of well because he likes oh, we, to go we, and hunt. Oh, we've, al we've already talked about <laughs> this. I told him, I told him as soon as the first hunting trip is set up, you. That he includes plus one. Plus one. Because that is me. <laughs> well, we've already talked about this. Speaking about family, so tell me about your siblings or your, your family makeup. Okay, so I have two older brothers. My oldest one named Gerald, and then uh, my middle brother is named Curtis. Okay. Do any of them play sports? Not anymore. Not they anymore? they both played uh, football all the way up until high school, okay. and then after high school, 
uh, that was that was when they finished playing football. Okay. Speaking of football, we're gonna go ahead and oh, Shipley Donut. Shipley's Donuts. Shipley's is, Donuts. Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. <laughs> I, I need some of that right now. Better than a Krispy Kreme? Better than Krispy Kreme. Yeah. Yeah, hands down. I have a little bit of experience with Shipley's yeah, Donuts. Ship, Shipley's is, is the real deal. I grew up on Shipley's. Uh, each Sunday, my church, mm -hmm. uh, after after Sunday school, right. we would go into the cafeteria and, and they would serve Shipley's Donuts. And so. And you take an extra box. Oh, man. They, they <laughs> saved me a couple just because they knew I love Shipley. Yeah. Um, speaking of after church, spirituality, I'm, I'm finding out that there's quite a few guys that have some deep spiritual roots mm -hmm. over there. I, I think I'll put you in that category as well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, I grew up in the church. Uh, my mother made sure all three of us boys were with her no matter when, what it was or what it was for to go to church. Uh, we were there for Sunday school uh, every Sunday. Uh, we were there for the services uh, and I just that's just the mindset that I've always had and uh, everything that I've been given has been a blessing and what I can attribute to what God has done for me in my life and uh, uh, like you said I'm very spiritual and, and there are other guys that I can relate to that are in that locker room a lot of people actually yeah. uh, that are in that locker room that I can relate to as far as uh, you know having a spiritual conversation with them and being able to just to reflect and relax on, on you know what God has done right so you're blessed to be in this position, you know, making definitely, a 53-man roster. Yes, sir. Uh, you had a pretty good preseason. Looking back at it, can you think of any bodies or any situations that you say, you know what, that event or that person was something that really helped me get to where I'm at now, whether it was a work ethic or just anything like that? I've always attested, uh, you know, what I've done or how I've been to, to the way that I was raised from my mother. Uh, my mother really instilled a, a, a huge work ethic in, in my brothers and I. Uh, and the biggest thing that I've always taken from her is, uh, you know, whenever she would tell us to do something, make sure we do it wholeheartedly and give it 100%. And so uh, I learned that the hard way, mostly from <laughs> cleaning up and, okay. and doing chores. And I, w I would be eager to go outside and play with my friends and I would half clean the chores. Like my mother would be like, hey, you got to clean the dishes clean up your room before you can go outside and play with your friends. Uh -huh. Throw stuff under the bed, throw stuff in the closet, <laughs> you know, put the dishes in the dishwasher, kind of halfway wipe the counters and then go about my business and come home uh, and find out that I'm grounded for the next three days and, <laughs> and won't be able to see my friends anymore because right. uh, I didn't complete the job to the, to the best of my ability. And so um, ever since those little small lessons uh, ha have stuck with me and carried me to, to a place that I am now that even whenever it's something so small and minute, uh, you know, I still want to give it 100% no matter what it is. Okay, which I think it shows in your running because man, that was something that, you know, us guys sitting in the media box hadn't, you know, hadn't been too familiar with you mm -hmm. before. We see you out there and it's like, man, this guy is doing good. How, how would you describe your, your running style? Because it seems relentless. Uh, I, 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 I want to say that, that I want to be intense. And uh, the reason why is my senior year in, in college, and I was like this before this, but uh, my senior year in college, uh, I had a bad right knee uh, tear. I, I tore just about every ligament in the knee, it seems like. Uh, but, I, but I tore my ACL, MCL, lateral meniscus, and I had a medial microfracture okay. uh, in my right knee. And uh, you know, the game kind of was taken away from me uh, for about a full year and it was a long rehab process that I had. And at that point during that time, I realized that I was still blessed to be able to have an injury, uh, be able to have the people around me to help me recover and be able to still pursue my dream of playing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, after I you know, kind of reflected back on everything that God had done for me, man, I don't know where my last play is going to be. And so if this is my last play, I want people to remember me as the guy that, you know, gave 100% on his last carry or the guy that gave 100% selling out for uh, for his teammates, you know, right. getting a block, uh, you know, just helping downfield, doing special teams. It didn't matter. I, I just want people to be like, man, that guy is giving it his all. Yeah, it shows, it shows. <laughs> so I had some preseason information, man. Mm -hmm. You had a heck of a preseason. So, and, and it seemed like, I don't know if this was in a game plan or the coach just saw it and was getting excited, but you had 47 rushing attempts. The next most was uh, Kenyon that had 15. You had 43. 
So um, that's incredible. Then your rushing yards, you had 179, which was by far the most on the team, two rushing touchdowns. So you did you did pretty good, man. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was it, man. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, people get in touch with you again. I found you on Instagram, but how can, how can your fans interact with you? Uh, well, I, I have an Instagram. My Instagram name on there is Fozzy Wit. That's F O Z Z Y. Okay. W H I T T. Okay. Uh, my Twitter name is also the same thing. F O Z Z Y W H I T T. And uh, one thing that you may not know about me is that I also refer to myself as Captain America. Uh, that is. That <laughs> Y'all is can't see it, but it's a bag. I, I have my backpack there. That's what I carry with me every single day. I have my wristbands with me. I always, yeah, yeah. I always have my wristbands on me. But <laughs> that is really who I am. I go. Fozzy is really my alias, but Captain America is really who I. Does this really who you are? That's really who I am. Okay, do does Captain America and. Uh, crack and ever have conversations or they, they come out of two <laughs> we, different We've times. actually talked about this a couple times. Yeah, yeah, sure. that, that is something that I didn't know, but uh, I appreciate you coming on the show and I uh, wish you the best of luck this upcoming season. So, yes, uh, this is Chris Jenkins along with Fozzie Whitaker. Thank you guys for watching and also, I forgot to mention what I have at this time. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get these videos as soon as they come out. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, yes, sir. My pleasure.